Hi everybody, it's Amy. This is module four overview. So this module is basically the basics of 3D design. You're gonna learn about 3D design and choose one project from three choices that you're gonna focus on. You could also create a variety of 3D artworks from the three choices. Your choices are a cardboard sculpture, you could do a wearable art fashion design, or you could do installation art. You're going to be learning and practicing design processes that include observation, brainstorming, creating a mock-up, and then implementing and making your project. So you'll also be able to create 3D works that express meaning and connection. So that's the goal of this uh, module. By the end of the module, you'll be able to demonstrate basic 3D design skills and then show your growth as an artist with your design skills. So the driving questions are, why do we design? How does 3D design impact the world we live in? And how do we create unique and interesting 3D works that have personal voice and can engage other people? So I will also be uh, translating all of this to Spanish. I just haven't gotten to that yet. So let's take a look at the choices. The first one is cardboard design sculpture. So the first part is about what is sculpture. And there's a definition there about sculpture. These are things where I want you to choose which one you're gonna do, and then you're gonna go through and watch the videos and read the information. So the first video is from the art assignment, which is a PBS program, and it's about assignments with sculpture. So some of these we might be watching in class uh, through the unit. I might show them in the beginning of class um, and some of them you need to watch on your own. Here are some examples of cardboard sculpture. So you can see that some of them have additional items included, some, you know, fabric, paper, some of them are painted, some of them are just left as cardboard. Uh, so those are the examples. And here's the assignment overview. So in this project, you'll create a cardboard sculpture with cardboard and other choice materials. Other materials that people commonly use are glue and tape, wire, yarn, paint, markers, paper clips, glue sticks, popsicle sticks, straws, fabric. There's lots of things you can use. So you're going to be making a materials list when you know you need projects materials and you're going to let me know and I can get those for you. You could also paint your final project with acrylic paints if you choose. That's optional. You're going to use the design process for seeing your project through. And this is for each one, the wearable art, installation art, and the cardboard sculpture. The basic idea of the design process is observing. It's also researching. You're gathering data and then you need to make sure you have an understanding of what the project really is. What, what is this project about? What am I going to be making? Has it already been done? If it's already been done, you want to do something different. It might be boring if you just recreate the same thing that's already been done. And then if you're making this for someone else, like, you know, we'll call them the client, then you need to think about what does that person need? If you're making something for someone, what are they looking for? Or what do you want to create for them? So that's the first stage research plan. The next step is brainstorming. Do some rough drafts and sketches from your research. Use your sketchbook, sketch out as many ideas as you can, and talk to other people. Talk to your peers in the class, talk to me, uh, talk to guest teachers if they're in. Get some ideas to make your ideas uh, even more viable. Come up with as many ideas as possible. Then the next step is you need to decide which one you're going to do and create a prototype. So your prototype is just basically for this project, it's a drawing. But if you want to make a small 3D sculpture out of paper that takes maybe 20 minutes to construct to see what it might look like on a small scale, you could do that. So the mock-up stage is basically figuring out what's going to be possible. And then is it going to work? Is it going to stand up on its own? Is it going to hang up? Is it going to be wearable? Is it going to be able to be done in the time that we have? So think about those things. And then think about any problems or flaws that might come up and talk to other people. Use the collected information uh, and to create your drawing or prototype and then make a decision, make some many decisions about what works, what doesn't work. And then you're ready to do the last part, which is implementing or actually creating your project. Tie up your loose ends and start making your product. So 
your final product will be based on observation brainstorm and maybe the prototype or the drawings. The observation brainstorming and prototype process, for some people it might take an entire class period or a day or two, but for some people it goes very quick. They don't need a lot of time, so that's your decision how much time you need for this design process. As long as you get to the implementation part and creating part within a few days, okay, or less. And here's the basic breakdown of what I just talked about for, for the design process. So that's cardboard sculpture. So here are the examples again. You can see uh, those examples and the video. So let's take a look at wearable art. So uh, again, the definition, what is wearable art? It's right at the top. So wearable art is not just regular things that you normally wear. Wearable art is something that's specifically designed or it might be handmade or crafted to express an idea or fine art. There are many videos in this module. One of them is uh, from, actually two of them are from Khan Academy. One is the CEO of Burberry and it's very interesting listening to this person talk about uh, fashion in the industry. The next one is a video uh, about fashion and alienation in the 1960s. It's a really interesting video about wearable art and um, art as fashion. And then here's just a little bit of information about um, how wearable art can be very personal and aesthetic. And it's, it's difficult to define wearable art. So really you need to, if you're going to choose this, you need to come up with something that is interesting to you. It might include a lot of different fabrics and it might include sewing. It might just include hot glue gunning your, your stuff together, but it's really about a personal vision. So we have some great examples here. There's full body 3D paper art that you can see in these first two images. Uh, when I enlarge this, you can really see these are pretty amazing paper art that uh, is wearable. And here's another one made out of paper. Uh, the links are there, you can see them. And then this last one, which is absolutely stunning. This is a student in Washington who created a prom dress made of duct tape. And she actually won a scholarship for this as a contest. The whole design, she thinks she had a purse and shoes, uh, headpiece, everything was made of duct tape. So that is definitely wearable art and absolutely stunning. There are some examples of hats and headwear, and then there are some other examples. And there's one that even has an LED light, which is very interesting. So take a look at those examples. You can click on the links that take you to the websites. And if you're going to do wearable fashion, basically you're creating a large scale wearable art piece. It can't be something really tiny. You can't just make a ring and that's it. So unless you're spending lots of time working on details, but you can use other choice materials. There's a list of things that most people commonly use, and you could also paint your final project. The design process is exactly the same as we talked about with the cardboard sculpture. So that's all here. Let's go back to the very top. And um, that's the wearable art. And the last one is going to be installation art. So installation art is an artistic genre that's three-dimensional, usually three-dimensional, but it's also site-specific. It's also designed to transform someone's perception of a space. There are some main characteristics of installation art that make it installation rather than just sculpture. So it's usually mixed media. And mixed media is a variety of different things put together uh, to create an artwork. It's also usually a sensory experience, whether it's a smell or a sight or something that you hear. It's also a conceptual use of space. It's not just, oh, it's there. It's maybe something that you happen upon in the woods or that you walk into a gallery and that you're a part of. It's also very uh, site specific, like I said, but it's also temporary. Usually installations aren't something that stay forever. So there are some videos here that are pretty good. Uh, this first one is the most amazing art installations. There's 15 of them. It's quite a long video, but you can skip through it. This one, next one is an illusion immersive interactive art installation. I do not expect you to do something digital or something massive like this, but it gives you a great idea of what some people are doing nowadays with installation and technology. Book from the Sky is something you should watch if you're going to choose installation art. We might actually watch that in class. So it's a very, very good one uh, with a great explanation of what installation art is. There's a wonderful uh, installation art piece here called uh, Trade. 
gifts for trading land with white people. And it's from Juan A. Quick to see Smith. It's a it's an it's a piece that hangs on a wall, but it has a lot of trinkets and things up above this uh, collage painting that includes a lot of images of indigenous people and uh, trinkets and things that they uh, that could be traded uh, for land. Um, and so, if you look at the concept of the idea, it's not a piece that is necessarily something that you are immersed in or walk through, but it's a piece that brings you in. So it is considered installation art as well as mixed media. So for this assignment, uh, you'll be creating an installation art. If you want to work in a group for this project, you can. And actually, if you want to work in a group for all of these projects, you are welcome to do that. But whatever, if you do decide to do that, you have to be dedicated to the process with your group and you have to have an active part. You can't just say, oh, that person's doing this and I'm just doing this. And then you sit around that that's not okay. So talk to me if you wanna work in a group. I'm 100% for collaborative art for this project. You also need to decide when you're finished with the project, where's it gonna go? If you are going to display your art in a specific site or place, you need permission, so I'll work with you on that. And of course, if you want to paint your project or add other things to it at the end, you can. So there's also number three, there's a list of things that you could use, but it's not limited to you know, all those things on the list. You can use other stuff. And the design process is the same as the others. So Wow, those are the three choices that you could make for this project. If you have a different idea for this project and you really want to go with that, let's talk it over and uh, we can go through what you need to do uh, so it you know fits with what we're doing. When you're finished, uh, the turn in is going to be three images of your final work. You're going to be putting them right here in the OneNote. Yes, you have to take your images and yes, you have to turn them in. This is how they're graded. Then the material, you have to answer these questions about the materials, the themes, your meaning, and what's successful about your work. So this part is not only turning in your art, but it's also the reflection about your art. The more you write, the more you describe, the higher your score. Down below is the grading area. You're being graded on making and investigating an idea and refining and completing your work. You're also graded on the meaning. Are you conveying your meaning through your art and through your reflection? And then the reflection is analyzing and evaluating, interpreting the meaning in your work. And then the last part is really connecting, synthesizing and connecting a personal idea to your experiences in making art. So I highly recommend that you highlight things. For example, just select them, whoops, um, select them and then you can um, highlight them from the um, up above when you're working in text. Sorry, I'm touching the screen right now and I'm recording this in my car because I don't have a quiet space in the, in the school. So anyway, I don't have my mouse with me, but this is the turn in page. And after I proof it one more time, I'm gonna distribute this to you. Let's take a look at our calendar uh, for January because our semester is close to ending. Today is the 7th. This is when I'm recording this video. And when I look at our calendar, very carefully, which you have access to, I can see that the week of the 10th is the whole week working on this project. The week of the 17th, we do not have school on Monday, but you can work on this the entire time. And then it is due on the 21st. So you have two full weeks to work on this project. You have enough time to do this and get it done. Uh, we will also be going over the final exam portfolio. Uh, I think the 11th is when we're going to go over that. And then you'll be putting together a digital portfolio of your work and you'll be presenting that uh, the 24th or 25th to the class, whether it's a link or whether it's a file in the collaboration site. And then we'll spend some time exploring people's uh, digital portfolios during that time. And then of course our final exam is uh, one of those last days of the week. It'll be the 26th, 27th, or 28th. And the final exam will consist of an in-class reflection, an art project we're doing together, and then some cleanup. Okay, that was a lot of information. So hopefully that helps as an overview for our last module of this semester. Thanks for watching.